stood two lions, almost fast asleep. A little green hornet climbed up his nose and tickled that lion all the way down to his toes. Then out of nowhere, a monkey jumped in to attack. The lion stood back and almost broke his back. The other woman, the woman lion came up real close. She said, come here, baby. Who loves you the most? And after a while, the lion remembered his style. It said, it's me, baby. It's been a while. And she asked the question, well, what do you want to do tonight? He says, I want to do the same thing that I do every single night. Is I want to get down to play. And maybe we can make a little Bobby Rosé. Hey, yeah, yeah. Come on down. Sometimes you go to a place and you have a little attitude. I got something to put you in a really good mood. You say, hey, what is that, Bobby? What can you do? I said, I'm going to come here and I'm going to paint with you. Welcome. I'm Bobby Rose. Now, I am going to show you a couple different things. Now, I have my standard canvas, as you might understand. Wait, what? Who's Bob A. Rose? Well, I guess that is something you might want to ask that question so I can explain. Maybe this will help me out a little bit. <laughs> Let me take a little sip. Oh, yeah, that here? That's Bob Ross. Bob Ross, I'm a good, big fan of Bob Ross. Now, Bob Ross was an individual who painted for many years for PBS. He did over probably 354 paintings. Actually, most people don't know he did about a thousand paintings because what he did was he painted one painting for him to reference and then he did the other painting while he was on the show. Now, my name derives a couple different ways, Bob A. Rose. Of course, I took a little bit of spin on the Bob Ross. I just made it a little bit more classy. Not to say that Bob Ross wasn't classy because he's one of the classiest fellows that ever lived, no doubt. But my character is more, yes, it's a character. Bob Ross is a combination of Dolomite. So if Bob Ross and Dolomite had a baby, that would probably be Bob A. Rosé. That would probably be me. <laughs> so um, that's a little bit about me. So what we're going to paint today is what we call an a la prima. You say, what? So always when I would watch Bob Ross paint, and so you got to slap it on there sometimes. You just got to slap it like this right here. You gotta slap that paint and this water on that canvas. And a la prima basically means, in French, wet on wet, or only one. So we do a little bit of improv. You just paint what you wanna paint. You don't know what you're gonna do. You're just gonna take a little of this titanium white, and I'm just gonna rub it on this canvas like so. And so I'm working with five different colors here. And we'll go and name those a little bit here in a minute. But I want just you to spend some time and see what's going on here. You just got to paint nice little strokes like that surface and get that baby nice and soft and wet. You just get it. You just spend some time with it. And now the difference between myself and Bob Ross, Bob Ross spoke real quiet. It spoke real gentle like so. And that's wonderful. And I love that about him. Some people used to say that Bob Ross would help put them to sleep. And the reason he did that, lacked the knowledge that most people don't know, is that for many years, Bob Ross was in the military and he was a sergeant. And he, was, he would be the one that tell you to go clean up your bed. And he had to yell all the time. So after he spent that time, he had made the vow that he's no longer gonna yell like that. He said, I'm tired of yelling. I'm just gonna talk real soft and nice like this. And so that's why Bob Ross would always talk soft and nice like this. So we're gonna talk real soft and nice like this. But at first we had to remember, <laughs> there's a little bit more of the Bobby Rose that you don't know. 
So now we got that surface nice and wet. We got our brush right there. We're gonna dip it in the water and we're just gonna beat it against this stand right here. Just go ahead and beat it. Beat the devil out of it. That's what Bob Ross would say. We're gonna beat the devil out of it. I said, get back behind me, Satan. Get back behind me. So you're gonna beat the devil out of it. Now I'll dip that in there. I'm gonna transfer over while that's nice and wet. I like that surface. I'm gonna move over to what we will call Acadium Yellow. And now you're asking yourself, what are we gonna paint? Again, we're gonna make it up as we go along. That's the beauty of this. That's the beauty of the painting that I share with you. So I'm gonna move over to this nice brush here. Actually, I'm gonna look into my repertoire of my brushes. I like to keep my brushes in a nice rolled bag. And this brush here in particular is one that I like to use often. It has a nice flat hand. You're gonna dip this in the water. And I'm gonna give this a nice yellow coat to the background. I feel like I want a little bit of sunshine. A little sunshine here. So we're just gonna go on top of this real nice and easy. Give it some nice strokes like that. We're gonna go ahead. It's okay where you start. We're gonna fill this whole entire surface. I want to paint this whole entire surface of this canvas. So we're gonna do that really nice and easy like that right here. We're gonna cover that up. There's been some arguments in the past about, well, when you do the wet on wet technique, you never really get to see the brush strokes. And I don't think that's also very true. Oftentimes you do get to see it because you see I be stroking. <laughs> so I'm gonna stroke it to the right. And I'm stroke to the left, stroke to the right, stroke to the left, till I cover that whole entire surface. So yeah, just go ahead and have a little fun with that right there. Paint that entire canvas nice and easy. And like Tina Turner said, we like to do everything nice and easy. You know what I mean? So we're just gonna enjoy that here and just Get that nice and yellow. If you look at it, I don't know if it's just me, but it's already making me happy. See that smile? Is it making you smile too? <laughs> oh yes. That's a beautiful thing right there. I love it. Let's get these edges. Cover these edges up. Because sometimes you gotta get the edges, right? You gotta take care of your edges. Edges. <laughs> your edges. You wanna make sure your edges is right. Cover that up nice and good. Nice sunshine color on both sides there. That nice one. I'm liking that color. I'm gonna go a little bit, a little bit more. I want a nice deep cadmium yellow. Nice and wet. And you might be asking yourself, well, okay, Bob A. And I understand the Bob Ross part of it. I understand that portion. But tell us a little bit more about how you got the rosé. That's a great question. I'm glad you asked that question. So rosé, I'm gonna stick this in the brush right here like that. Beat the devil well out of it. Rosé comes from the wine. Sometimes it's nice to sit back and if you're at the legal age of 21 and have a nice refreshing bottle of rosé wine. Now, rosé wine is made very uniquely, I see. So the way it's done is by so. You take the deepest purple of a grape and you crush it. The skin of it is deep, deep, dark purple. You crush it and you pull the skin off real fast and then you dip it and then you add and let it ferment a little bit. So what's nice about a rosé, it can become a various of different colors. It could be from the lightest pink to sometimes the darkest purple, follow anywhere in between. And that's that's very nice, because I'm one of the darkest of the berries, and I'm beautiful, I'm Bob A. Rose. So that's a little bit about that. Now that we have that surface area, and we looked at a little bit yellow, we're gonna ask ourselves, well, what, what do you wanna do next, Bob A? Was, you know, that's great. I'm gonna go over here and grab this other brush here. I'm gonna dip it in the water. I'm gonna grab a little bit of this black. This black here. This is a nice ivory black. It's one of the deepest blacks that you can find. There's, there's Negro black, and then there's ivory black. You're like, well, sometimes that's just black black. That's right, it's black black. 
So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna just paint right on top of this yellow. I think I'm gonna paint a nice piano. I'm in a musical feel, a musical mood. So I'm gonna do a nice little piano on top of this right here, like this. And the beauty of this, it doesn't always have to reflect exactly what you think it's supposed to look like. Because I know what it is. I'm gonna give it a nice little surface area like that. Some nice clean strokes. Right there. I'm gonna give this, it's gonna be a grand piano. So it's gonna be nice and big, I'm gonna go like that. I'm gonna give it a little leg on that piano like this. Some people say, what, that don't look like a piano? Bob A? Well, it's a piano. I'm gonna put this right here in the background right there. Let's put one more leg right around there. I'm gonna try not to let that drip. The thing about sometimes wet on wet, it will drip. And you just, that's okay. There's no accidents. Just happy little mistakes. It's okay, it's no mistake. I'm gonna cover it like that. Nice and easy. And I really like the way that's kind of coming out. And I think what I want to do next on top of that is I'm gonna add a chair next to it. Sometimes you would have a bench there, but what I want to do is have, have a little chair. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab some more of this Kadium White and I'm gonna just gently dab it a little bit. To give it there. I don't want to take too much of that yellow, but I just want to have like a nice yellow, a nice little chair. Like that. Like so. That'll give it a little bit of different texture underneath there. And while I have that white, I'm going to go ahead and put another little picture right here in the background. A little small square, a little picture. Now, I want to tell you out there that some people was like, well, who else used this wet on wet style? Because Bob Ross got his style from a, a gentleman named Ben Alexander, who was German. He studied this style. And Ben Alexander would say, I invented the wet on wet style. And there was one episode that Bob dedicated to Ben Alexander out of respect to him. And after that, Ben Alexander was so mad. He said, how dare Bob Ross talk about me? I'm the one who invented it. He thinks he's better than me. And then they never talked anymore. But contrary to that, Wet on Wet Style has been around for a long time. One of the great artists, Claude Monet, uses the style because they would like to go outside and reference it because, again, it gives you a very nice impressism. I can't say that word. These are wrinkled lips. They're brand new. Impressism <laughs> type of style. So you're just in the moment. And it's nice. So I'm going back there. So that's my little... My little painting in there in the background, I'm going to fill that in. I'm going to switch it up a little bit and go with this nice soft brush here. This is sometimes called a dagger brush. It has a nice pointed end. And I'm going to add a little red detail into that painting. Put a little red square in there. Like that. Because I like to add a little contrast. It reminds me a little bit of the Japanese flag or Japan. Put that in there. Like that. But I like it. And then I might just add a little outline to that chair. And you know what else I'm going to do while I have that red out? I am going to dip that red in here. I'm going to make a guitar case with red right underneath this table. Just for fun just because we can, like that. And I dipped it a little bit into that black, and again, that's okay. That's all right, we're not gonna worry about it. We're just gonna go ahead and fill that in. 
make a little red case right there, a little guitar case. Mm-hmm. I'm enjoying that quite a bit. It's a little red case underneath that that piano. It's really nice and delicate. You're like, well, I don't know if I've ever seen a red case like that before. It's pink. Because that's the beauty about being a creative. We're all creative beings and we are born to create. Sometimes we forget that. Sometimes we forget that we're supposed to create. And oftentimes we'll tell ourselves, well, I'm not an artist, but you are. You are an artist. Because if you think about it, think about when you were a baby. If you could think back that far, Bob A. Rose can. But if you think about the time period when you were first a little, a little child, and before you could walk and you try to stand up, right? And you try to stand up like this here, but you didn't. You kind of just bounced around like this, right? You heard that Beyonce song and you kind of just bounced like this back and forth. That was dancing because your body is made that way to create and, and, and perform as artists. You're dancing, you're dancing around. And before you were able to talk, you would always make this little You couldn't get your words out. But what were you doing? Singing. You were singing. Another part of your artistic trait. And before you could write words to communicate that way, what were you doing? Drawing. Making designs. Mm -hmm. Bob and Rose told you, didn't they? So that is what I want you to know. You are a creative being. You are born to create. And it's your job to bring that out. It sure is. Take a little sip here. Mm, that's good. It is your job to pull what's ever in your heart. I'm moving over to this blue right here. This blue is a cobalt blue. We're going to just cover the outline of this piano a little bit. But your job is to figure out what's inside of your heart and in your mind and bring it out and put it on the canvas. That is what you are supposed to do. So I want you to take time, breathe in, figure out at some point in your life, I'm gonna sit back and I'm going to do a painting with Bob A. Rose. Spend some time creating something new that you thought you couldn't create and find out that you can. And just have fun with it. Because that's what we do. We have fun while we create, we have fun. Maybe you'll find that you do have a gift in it. You said, well, I am. He was right. This is not such a bad idea at all. How's that coming along? That's looking pretty good. That's looking pretty good. I'm going to add a little bit more white on the sides here. And just a little a reference to, I'm gonna have a little happy tree right there. You're like a tree, where are we gonna put a tree right in the middle? Yep, a tree right there. Just add a little bottom. Bring it all the way up like that. Now I'm just filling in a little bit of the details of this guitar case with a little white giving a little bit more body to it. Mm-hmm. A little details to that piano going over it. I'm gonna go a little 
dab like that just a little bit. Just get a little bit more texture. I'm going to finish up that tree on that side. Nice little tree. Because you can have a Balbe Rose without a contributor with some kind of tree, right? And it should have a little friend on the side. A little small tree. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. And that's okay. It's just the beauty of it. It's the beauty of it that you find and that you bring out and you put it on the canvas. So remember that. And don't forget, you are a creative. You are amazing. And I want you to just enjoy that little masterpiece that we created together. Hope you enjoyed the time that we spent together. Because I enjoyed the time I spent with you. And that's all we have today. We're going to tune out. Come see us next time. I'm Bob A. Rose. Good night.